Welcome back. Now, before jumping or writing the SAS code, let's first take a look at what SAS actually is. So this lecture is designed to give you a very quick overview of what SAS is, how it works, and what features it includes. SAS is a preprocessor and extension of CSS that adds a lot of power and elegance to the basic language. So basically, we use SAS to fix the problems that we have with CSS. CSS get up very messy very quickly for each project. Having a single CSS file with thousands of lines of code without any reusable pieces, without any logic, it get completely unmanageable after some time. And that's why we use CSS, which provides us with a couple of handy features and tools that CSS simply doesn't have. While at the same time, that's very amazing. Okay, the way CSS works is like this. Instead of writing a CSS file with regular CSS code, we write SAS code in a SAS file, then we run a compiler, and that compiler converts the SAS code we write into regular CSS code as if all we ever did was write in a regular CSS in the first place. So we need to process our SAS code first, and that's why it's called CSS preprocessor. Our website has no idea that the code we write in the beginning was in SAS because it only ever sees the final output of the compiler in the form of CSS code. Okay, does it make sense? Now, there are actually other CSS preprocessors like LAS or Stylus, but SAS is the most popular one, which is why I choose it. So, what are these features that features actually give us? Let's get a quick overview before we actually start inviting SAS. First, SAS gives us variable which like a normal programming languages. Allow us to have reusable values such as colors, font size, spacing, blah, 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 and so many things. Next, we have a nesting in order to nest it selectors inside of uh, one another, allowing us to write less code. Next up, there are operators for mathematical operations like inside of CSS then partially and imports which are one of the most important and most useful feature of SAS allowing us to write CSS in a different file and then importing them all into one single file next there are mixings to wide reusable pieces of CSS code allow functions which are quite similar to mixings with the difference that they produce a value that can be used later. Next up, we have our extent, which can be used to make a different selectors in Harriet declaration that are common to all of them. And finally, control directives allow developers to write complex code using conditionals and loops, if else conditions, like in real programming language. Now, one another thing before we start writing SAS, maybe you have been googling SAS before and look at some SAS code and seen different ways that the code looks and that's right. There are actually two SAS syntax which can be quite confusing so we will have to clear that up. One syntax which is actually the original one is just called SAS like the language. The other one is C. SCSS, sorry, SCSS, which stands for Sassy CSS. The SAS syntax is indentation sensitive and doesn't use any curly braces, semicolons. So, as you see here on the left side, and none and bracket, this is a different thing between each of them. However, I find the syntax a bit confusing. I find it also more difficult to run as you Google or as you uh, browsing you need more examples about this also more difficult converting original CSS projects to search with syntax that's why I prefer the C the SCSS syntax oh now I'm <laughs> confusing okay now if for some reason you prefer the SAS syntax please feel absolutely to free to use that one because everything should still work the exact same way will just look different all right that's it for the basic sas intro in the next video i will show you how to connect angular 5 with sas